Entering inventory in Masterpiece is one of the most widely used parts of the program. This is where you'll enter details about all your inventory, such as the title, category, medium, artist, vendor, cost, price, dimension, circa, images, and much, much more. Every single detail you add to your inventory can then be searched, sorted, and filtered. Most of them can also be shown on the inventory list where you can further customize what you see when logging in and it can be specific for each user login. Let's start by adding a new piece. To do that, just click on the plus icon in the top right. The inventory screen was originally designed to mimic an index card with tabs on the top for displaying specific info particular to that item. In this video, we're going to mainly focus on the first two tabs and just touch on the other ones as there will be more in-depth videos on each of the other tab functionalities. Because this video is going to go through all of the specific fields and what they do, it will be a little bit longer than the others, so feel free to skip around if needed. First thing to do is add a title. This is really the only main requirement in adding an item record. You can add other details later, um, but you cannot save an item record without a title of some sort. Now to choose an addition type. The default is unique, which is the same as original or one of a kind. You can change the default addition by clicking on the dropdown. There are four types of items allowed in the system. Unique, open, limited edition, and non-stock. There are other videos that go more in depth on limited editions and open items, so we'll keep this simple and just stick with unique. Before adding inventory, it's a good idea to add your categories, mediums, artists, and vendors, as you will be choosing them from a list to attach to the inventory. Categories and mediums are a parent-child relationship, so the mediums available to you would depend on what kind of category you have selected. Let's change this one to just a original oil and canvas, sounds good. Here's where you enter the artist and the vendor. In Masterpiece, the artist is who made the piece and the vendor is who you got it from. So if your item is on consignment, this may be the same person, but that won't always be the case. But because this is the case for the majority of times, when you enter the artist, it will also default as the vendor if the contact record is marked as both an artist and a vendor. However, you can change this if need be. To enter, just type in the first few letters of the artist's first name or last name and then choose from the dropdown. The custom category is for profiles that may need to record a second type of category besides the main one. For example, you may want to keep track of items in the Southwest or East Coast. Um, so this is in addition to the actual item category. Subject is for keywords about the piece, which can also be used for search terms on your website. Both the subject and custom category fields are what is known as combo boxes. A combo box is a combination of a standard list box or a drop-down list as an editable text box, which allows for users to enter a value that isn't in the list. But simply, if the text is in the dropdown, you can select it from the list. If it is not, then you can enter it in and the dropdown will be in the list next time. The scan code is the identifying number associated with the item record. It gets automatically created using the first two letters of the artist's last name, first letter of the first name, and then some numbers in consecutive order. The number doesn't appear until you hit the save button. And you can always overwrite the scan code with your own number if you wish by pressing the green edit button. Quantity is how many items you're entering. By default, unique will always be one and uneditable, but this would be the place you would want to put in a quantity for open items. Our code is short for artist code and is meant to be the artist code of the item that is on consignment. For example, you may keep track of your items by title or scan code, but the artist may have their own code. This way you can print off a report of items that are sold with their own code on the report, which may help artists keep track of the items. Circa is just the year the item was made. Location is actually the company location, and the location will default according to your staff setting, but is useful for galleries that have multiple locations. You can move the gallery from one location to another simply by changing the name in the dropdown. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of different company locations, although if your company has different locations, they probably only have two or three. Masterpiece comes with four custom fields for data that you may need to keep track of and for fields that don't already exist. Some examples may be you may want to record the color of a piece or a country of origin. Now, in addition to the custom fields, you could theoretically also use the art code, custom category, and subject fields as whatever you want if you don't need those fields for the intended purpose. The reports can also be changed to reflect the new data fields. Images can be entered by selecting the browse button, finding where the image is on your computer, and simply selecting it. You can upload unlimited amount of images. Alternatively, you can drag and drop the image into this box and it will upload. And if you want to print off a tear sheet with all the info about the piece, you can press the print button. This report can be customized to look however you want. Note the show cost box on top. 
It is always checked by default on new items, but won't be checked when opening a previously saved item. Show cost trigger when an already saved record is open so that the purchase price and the vendor is not on display. Notice how at least one field disappears when I uncheck the show cost box. This is helpful if a customer is standing behind you and looking over your shoulder. You don't want them to see what the price for the vendor is. Okay, so let's move on to the detail tab. This tab is mainly numerical data. Starting on the top left, you have the taxable option, which indicates if an item will be taxable or not during a sale. Note that this is slightly different than charging no tax, which can be set at the transaction level. If the item is on consignment, check this box. You can manually put in a consignment percentage, or else the program will do it for you based on your settings or based on the art cost and price. The consignment percentage reflects how much goes to the vendor when the piece sells. All items have a purchase order attached to it, which you can see in the purchase order menu. You'll want to use the PO to do a return to artist if needed. The PO cost is something that gets set when saving and would default same as art cost. Quantity on hand is a number that automatically gets updated based on how many you entered and how many sold. Note that this is different than the quantity on the general tab, which is how many were originally entered. So this number is how many you have now. The art cost reflects how much goes to the vendor if the item is on consignment. If item is owned, then it reflects how much it costs you to obtain. The art price is the retail. Note that if you put in the cost and the price, Masterpiece will figure out the percentage for you. Or if you put in the percentage and the cost, it figures out the price for you. Or if you put in the uh, percentage and the price, it will figure out the cost. So you basically need two out of these three fields. The total cost and total price factors in any additional cost in the costing tab. This does not get reflected on the consignment report. So for example, you have a uh, painting that is on 50% consignment, but you may own the frame around it. Going to the right, you have a checkbox to not pay commission if you do staff commissions on items. Here's for the appraisal amount, which can then be printed on the appraisal report. If the item is two dimensional, you have the art height, art width, frame height, and frame width. If it is three-dimensional, like a sculpture, once you check the box, you can then enter the art depth and then the art weight. Dimension is default to English, but you can change it to metric with the drop-down. And finally, the date in is when the item was entered. It defaults to today's date based on your time zone settings and company settings, but you can also change it here if you need it backdated for any reason. Let's move on to attributes. So attributes are a new and very powerful addition to Masterpiece. There's a more in-depth video on attributes, but put simply, they are unlimited custom fields you can add to your item record. You can also assign a price and a value to the attribute. So one cool thing you can do is if you have a limited edition of let's say 100 editions, and each of those 100 editions can be sold in different sizes, and the bigger sizes are more expensive. So you can solve this with an attribute name of let's say size, a value of eight by 10, and a price differential of 150. Now this will add on $150 if the title was sold and the eight by 10 was sold. Uh, that's just one example, but you can do lots of other things with attributes. Costing. This is for additional pricing associated with the item. For example, you may want to record the cost for framing or shipping or appraisals or whatever other additional costs you may have. You can also choose to pass on the additional cost and have it added to the total price. Stock locations uh, keep track of where the item is currently and the history of where it came from, who moved it, how many were moved, and the date it was moved. Notes are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can also choose to have notes about a particular edition or for all the edition if you do limited editions. So maybe you have a title with 100 editions and number two was signed by the artist or has some kind of special circumstance around it. You can put notes in just for that edition. If the item was sold, put on approval, uh, quote or return, you will see the transactional history here. The web tab is where you can add or remove from the website or to Masterpiece Online, which is our online marketplace. If the item has a different price on the website than in the gallery, you can also enter that here. Auctions is another new feature in Masterpiece where you could have a personal auction on your website or on our Masterpiece Online Marketplace. Uh, so this just provides a whole new avenue for you to sell your inventory and attract a new customer base. And finally, there is the Interest tab, which adds to our CRM functionality. This provides the ability in allowing you to define the interest of contacts based on your inventory. So uh, if and when you set this up, then a client list will show here if they match up with the keywords you define in this module. You can also export the list directly from here. And that concludes an overview of entering inventory into Masterpiece Manager version 11.